Welcome back, Patriots, to the Ball Brad Show. It is Thursday, April 25th, and Joe Biden. Good old Joey, the geriatric, the puppet, the guy that hits a golf ball backwards, falls up a flight of stairs so many times that the Secret Service is now having him take the short stairs to get on Air Force One. Who knew there was even a short staircase to get on Air Force One? This dude trips over a sandbag at a graduation ceremony and can't get himself back up, falls off his bicycle standing stationary. How many of you people out there, you patriots, ever heard of somebody falling off their bicycle standing stationary other than maybe a toddler on training wheels? You also have this guy looking for dead people in the crowd. I still can't wrap my head around that one. And not just that, but he's conversing with dead people. He's having full-on conversations and seeing dead people. But don't worry, you guys. We shouldn't be worried about this guy one bit. This guy has his head on straight. We're, we're told that this guy's sharp. We're, we're told this guy is a, an intellectual, that he's a, he's a mentor to a lot of these people in the White House. Folks, his own staff is concerned that this guy's going to wipe himself out by tripping over a camera cable in the Oval Office. That is not a joke. As Joe says, no joke, not kidding. The most insane statistic we have here on the show, I see this every single morning, it is wild. His teleprompter is undefeated. We have just him yesterday. Fighting with his teleprompter again. And you know who won? The teleprompter has never lost. It's never going to lose. Folks, he talks about four more years. And then he says the word pause, which is displayed on his teleprompter. And then these knucklehead Dems, and some of these woke libs here, are chanting four more years for this guy. Four more years of Joe Biden. Can you imagine? Here we go. Growth. Folks, imagine what we can do next. Four more years. Pause. Four more years. Pause. Four more years. 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 Are you ready? Un I mean, folks, are you with me on this? Most insane statistic we have. Joe is out there on the campaign trail telling people that he's driven 18 wheelers. He completely just makes this stuff up out of thin air. He's telling people, oh, I was an activist. I was out there with the box and everything in like the 80s or whatever. No, you weren't, Joe. No, you weren't. <laughs> this guy makes up stuff about his own family. He uses his family as political pawns to push some sort of narrative out. It's disgusting. It is really disgusting. But again, it's amazing that the teleprompter has been fighting Joe since day one and is undefeated. It's insane. It's wild. I know. Well, we got a banger of an episode today. We got a lot of updates on things we've covered in the past. The big one here is regarding all these protests that have been taking place on college campuses. And what you're seeing now, looks like somebody's advertising Joe's underwear up there, is uh, Ivy League grads risk losing prize jobs for schools allowing anti-Semitic protests to fester. I called this, right? When we looked at NYU, uh, Berkeley, we also looked at Yale, Columbia, and I said, look, if these people are willing to sit there and do and say things like this. Just don't hire them. I would put a hiring freeze on Columbia University, Yale, Harvard, uh, Berkeley. Berkeley's a shoe in almost every year at this point. You would be insane to hire anybody from one of these schools. And you're going to put that school on your resume after seeing what's going on here. They're asking for the genocide of Jews and just chanting extremely anti-Semitic things. And it put in perspective, you guys, it's not just about the Jews. They are going after Americans with American flags. They're violently attacking Jewish people and Americans if you have an American flag on you. These people are not your friends. These people hate you. These people don't like you. And a lot of these people don't even go to the university of which they're protesting at. They're like shipping these people in. Who's funding them? So the violent anti-Semitic protest at some of the nation's elite colleges has forced top corporate recruiters to assess the quality of the education dispensed at these places Correct. Yes, been saying it. Folks, we we talked about it in our book. Trojan Horse had a lot to short America. We've been talking about it for, I don't know, at least 2015. Shit, this has been going on since what, 2013 to be more specific. And whether they should look elsewhere for job candidates. Yes. Activist investor, a Columbia University graduate, has begun to reconsider whether to focus offering jobs at his hedge fund to fellow alums and other Ivy League schools like Harvard, Yale, Penn, and their tepid responses 
the protests on their campuses. Um, you don't just have this gentleman here, but you're also having the guy from Kroger, I think it was, um, the guy that owns, what is it, the Patriots, pulling his funding, and I believe it's from Columbia University, his alma mater. Now, USC is having massive protests, and that's my alma mater for my master's degree. And I don't give any of my money to USC because after that master's degree, I saw how woke these people are. Ain't no way in hell I'm ever giving them my money. They know not to send me any mail because they ain't getting one dollar from me after what I saw and the crap that I had to go through and the garbage I had to read and write papers on that was entirely woke. I had to write papers, you guys, about microaggressions. You're triggering me. I didn't even know what the hell that was when I did my bachelor's degree and went into accounting. I come back to school. Everything's changed. You got these woke libs with their hair in the ponytail thing. Trump's the bad man. This is not an exaggeration, you guys. When Trump won, we had to take a class time and listen to these progressive lefties. I call them activist teachers. Just hysterically crying. And I'm texting my buddies as this is happening. Hysterically crying. They couldn't get their words out of their mouth. They were drooling. I'm not exaggerating this one bit and complaining about how terrible Trump was. I was the only guy that voted for Trump. And I'm looking around going, what the hell's going on? Everything's going to be fine. This is the way these people act, you guys. This is what college is now. It's a bunch of snowflakes and whiny, crybaby people. They're like children. So it says, we always look beyond the targeted schools, but we're doing it even more now after what's going on with these recent events. And rightfully so. Why the hell would you ever look at Yale again, at least for the next decade? We are looking for high quality candidates, but we're going to keep looking at different places. Rightfully so. Start looking at a lot of conservatives. Start looking at these Christian universities. You got Liberty. Was it Liberty University? You got uh, Tennessee uh, Christian University. I think it's what it's called, TCU. You got a lot of amazing universities out there. They don't need to be Yale, these Ivy Leagues. You don't get any head knowledge from these Ivy Leagues other than indoctrination of how we're a racist, ter- like a racist, bigoted, sexist country. I almost said a terrorist country, but we're leaning that direction as well with Joe Biden not handling the southern border. And we'll get a story on that in just one moment. The third point, which uh, manages $11 billion in assets, regularly recruited from places like Columbia in the past. Now he's broadening his focus to schools like this uh, Yeshiva University, the University of Florida and uh, Emory University. Good, good. Don't hire any of them. You see that those institutions show up on that resume, just throw it right into the trash can. And as you see here, anti-Semitism on campus surges as agitators take over. So a Columbia president spotted on campus as calls for her resignation intensify. You saw this from Claudine Gray, uh, or Gay rather, from Harvard. But not just a fact of what the hell she said. Very anti-Semitic stuff. If you, in, in my opinion, it was. She wasn't sitting there willing to say it in front of Congress, as well as plagiarizing. But authorities are now arresting people left and right. You got 20 people from uh, UT Austin here. The White House vows not to be quiet on violent protest, but silent is complicit. It's always complicit. Johnson says he's calling National Guard on Columbia protest, appropriate if threats not stop. USC today, that was the big one. USC has shut down campus. And USC is saying they're, they're pitching up tents now. They closed down the campus. A lot of the people aren't even students that are on the campus right now. And that, hence why they had to close it, because they don't know who the hell these people are. Sounds a lot like what Joe Biden's doing at our southern border, huh? Just close down the country, Joe, because we don't know who the hell 10 million people are. Could be terrorists, sex offenders, drug traffickers. We don't know who they are. But the same things happen on our college campuses where we allow these lefties, these nut jobs to roam free and shut down somebody's education that they're paying $90,000 a year for. Folks, it's $87,000 a year to go to USC, minimum, minimum. People are paying $87,000 to have their campus closed down. So you have arrests being made right now at UT Austin, which we mentioned. These protesters belong in jail. Folks, they're getting violent. We've heard people being stabbed in the eye. They're going after Americans. If you have an American flag on you and you're on a college campus right now, you are deemed to be violent, a threat to democracy, a threat to the country. Let that one sink in. You're carrying the American flag because you're a damn patriot and you love this country, best country we've ever has ever been created, and you're being attacked for it. So here's a little bit of footage of what's going on at UT Austin. Look at this, this is wild. <laughs> Potato quality, I apologize, but you see, you just see the chaos going on there. 
the, these protesters are heroes, you guys. They're, sa they're actually saving lives in Palestine, believe it or not. Um, can we just point out the fact that Hamas still has terrorists? Can, can we just point that out? It's not just any terrorists, folks. No. <laughs> it's American hostages. Hamas still has American hostages, and these losers on UT are chanting ceasefire. Why ceasefire if there's nothing in the negotiations that has the release of our hostages, meaning Americans, release our people? And it's so funny because they're like, you're occupying us. Nobody's occupying you. Nobody's occupied you since 2005. You've had, you've had, so, you've had more money than a lot of countries receive in humanitarian aid, and it's still a massive issue over there. So we, set, we give them humanitarian aid, right, most recently, and there's reports coming out that Hamas is selling it on the black market. Lovely. So Hamas releases video of injured American hostage under apparent duress. Hamas published a video of an American hostage in Gaza on Wednesday in what is being described as a psychological terrorism by Israel. There are roughly 130 hostages, including several Americans being held right now by Hamas as Israel continues to wage war against the terrorist group in, in Gaza. And people are calling for a ceasefire. If, why have a ceasefire if they're not going to release the hostages? Like, what collateral do you have? So Hamas released a video. We're not going to watch it here because YouTube has flagged the last four videos that I've covered. And by the way, the comments were never turned off by me, you guys. I just want to throw that out there. Never turned off by me. It's an automatic setting that the comments are always there. They are always on. I would have to physically go in and turn them off, which I've never done. Not just that. During the live chat the other day, you guys are the ones that told me. The Patriots always have our back. They always got my six and go, hey, man, the comments aren't on. I'm like, what the hell? I go in and look at the video and I turn them on. So people are saying, hey, they're still not turned on. So I go back in, I turn them on again. Go on my merry way. The, the, the show's over and I'm looking at, at nighttime. It says, still says zero comments. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Turn them off again. I had to go in there four times to turn them back on. Turns out, guess what was turned off again today? The comments were, we had to turn them back on early on. It's what we deal with. It's what we deal with. So one of the American hostages taken during October 7th attacks appearing under duress and bearing visible wounds. Well, yeah, you would expect so because they're terrorists, but we want to sit there and then negotiate with terrorists. Negotiate with terrorists. And, and again, these, these college kids, I'm calling them kids because they're children, uh, are just sitting there chanting, right? We, folks, some of these people are so insane on these college campuses. They're, 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 there's, there's banners called dykes for for Hamas, dykes for Hamas, lesbians for Palestine, LGBTQ plus for Palestine. So, I mean, somebody needs to explain to them what happens to gays or anybody part of the LGBTQ community in Palestine, specifically Gaza, especially with Hamas. They don't, these people are idiots. Like in all literal sense, you are an idiot. Go over there. If, if look, if they want to protest so much, they want to shut down college campuses. I say we fly them over there, fly them over there, and and we could show them how much Hamas loves them. How about that? Yeah, no, no. I want you to go up to Hamas and tell them how much you are lesbians and gays for Hamas, and let me know how that one works out for you. Do it on top of a rooftop, by the way. Let, let, let's really see how that one works out. Do it next to a swimming pool. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, do it next to a bonfire. Let's let's let. I'm I'm picking all these locations for a reason, right? Because they throw gays and LGBTQ community members off rooftops. They burn them alive in bonfires. They drown people in swimming pools. There's a reason why I'm bringing all this stuff up. So speaking of anti-Semitism, wild shit taking place on college campuses, asking for the freaking genocide of Jews. Folks, we're going back to like the 1930s again, it looks like. Well, Qatari official says there can be no peace or negotiations with Israel October 7th, only the prelude. This is jaw-dropping. A Qatari representative. Folks, the Biden administration is working with these people to help them negotiate. So with that preface, let's jump into here. So to the Arab parliament, you got this guy here, reportedly recently said that there could be no peace or negotiations with Israel and that Hamas October 7th terrorist attacks we're only a prelude to Israel's destruction. We're, I said this yesterday. They ain't holding anything back anymore. These university students aren't holding anything back. These pro-Palestinians aren't holding anything back. These pro-Hamas people are holding anything back. 
because the Qataris aren't holding anything back. They're saying, we want these fucking people off the face of the planet. We want to destroy them. <laughs> like, you know, when they show up on Pierce Morgan's show, hours of content, they're walking that fine line between supporting Hamas and not supporting Hamas. Like, we don't want the destruction of Jews. They're like, to the death of our Jews! To the Z death of our Jews! Like, they're just saying shit out loud now. We'll, we'll get to more. Oh boy, we will get to more. Trust me, folks. If you sat there on a college campus and said, hey, you know, um, I, I, I want the death of all black people and we're going to sit there in a white robe and start chanting all these things, which is evil, which is insane, by the way. I'm not for racism. I hate the Ku Klux Klan. Democrat Party created the Ku Klux Klan. Like, if you did that, you, you would be removed from the university. Like, if you just switch out these, these protesters that are anti-Israel and you just sat there and put them in white robes and saying they want the killing of all black people, everybody would be behind going, this is insane, this is evil, remove it, but it's okay if somehow you dress up and you show up on campus of which you don't even go to and start asking for the destruction of Israel and the death of all Jews, and you're violently attacking people, and somehow we're supposed to pretend like this is okay? This is why the left is destructive, you guys. The left will destroy this country. They will destroy this country unless we don't stand up against them. So the Middle East Research Institute translated his remarks that were posted Monday on social media, according to the Qatari Shura website, is promoted in Qatari military to an assistant commander. He also holds positions on the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee and the Cultural and Media Affairs Committee as well. His remarks come as President Joe Biden has largely relied on the Qataris to try to negotiate with Hamas and to release the Israeli and American hostages. Maybe that's why they haven't been released. Maybe that's why this guy right here is still being held up. Maybe that could be... It's, it's astounding. I mean, look, we, we saw Joe Biden fight. If Joe Biden can't sit there and win against a teleprompter, why do we think Joe Biden's going to win anything else every, anywhere? Could somebody explain to me what, what's a victory for Joe? What's a victory for Joe? He's had four years. What has he done that's so great? Well, he's, he's lowered prescription drugs for inhalers. How many people are like on inhalers? And look, don't get me wrong. That's a great thing to do. But is that like a real victory? Like were people really struggling getting inhalers? I mean, I have asthma. It's just astonishing to me that they're they're going, well, we we reduced the price of this. That's great, but what about everything else? Well, inflation's down. No, it's not. It's still up since you've been in office. Gas prices are down. Nope, those are up too since you've been in office. And actually they're still going up. Well, grocery prices are down. Nope, those are up too. I mean, you name it, everything's a piece of shit right now because you got a piece of shit in office. I hate the cost, but it's true. They you just our opener, our opener, I know people struggling here late. Our opener was Joe Biden. Biden with his teleprompter, and as he sat there and read the word pause from his teleprompter, these liberals, these Democrats, not really that big of a difference anymore, sit there and go, they want four more years of this. Four more years of crime, four more years of these grocery prices, four more years of inflation, four more years of having 10 plus million illegal immigrants entering the United States, terrorists, sex offenders, uh, drug traffickers, cartel, violent gang members, fentanyl. Like all this ticket, they want four more. These are, these are how stupid these people are. I'm, you are stupid if you want four more years of Joe. We can't take four more years of Joe. Joe can't even take four more years of himself. That's why when we looked at that church scene where they're chanting four more years yesterday, he was like, what the fuck? What? You want four more years of me? Really? So that's what's taking place here. Biden since appeared to blame Israel for the hostages not being released. So rather than blaming Hamas, he blames Israel. Gotta keep it together. <laughs> Gotta keep it together. <laughs> Holy lordy. So uh, he's demanding that they enact an immediate ceasefire. Why? Why? In exchange for nothing from Hamas. Why? There's people starving and, and, and they're, they're getting, you know, they don't have water. Terrible. Question, I've asked this question so many times. A lot of other countries out there in the world, a lot of them, about 190 plus in the United Nations. Where's all the humanitarian aid coming from them? 
Where's all the water and food coming from them? I don't see that many planes flying. I see a lot of American planes. Where's where's all the Arab nations? Why are they not unifying to help the Palestinians? By the way, why are they, why are they not taking any any Palestinians in? That's weird, right? That's really weird. That supposedly death to the Jews and all destruction of Israel, but yet they don't want to sit there and take in the Palestinians. They're not really giving much aid or flying in a lot of food. Weird. This, I, I really, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. Like, does anybody else not find that weird as hell? Like nobody. There's an entire globe of nations, and we're sending ninety-five billion dollar packages here and there, like sixty-five billion dollars to Ukraine. Where's all the other countries out there? That's it's really weird, right? Like, are we the only ones in NATO? Is it really? Again, I know I'm. I'm just. I'm so baffled that it's like, well, we're demanding a ceasefire. Like, where is everybody else on this shit? Like, why do we have to sit there and, and, and send our stuff to them? When it's like you've already sent them hundreds of millions of dollars, taxpayer dollars from the Americans to Gaza, to the Palestinians, and nothing's changed. If anything, it's just funded Hamas, which took it out on freaking Israel on October 7th. And now you're paying for the repercussions of the very government that you sat there and enabled to grow and get more powerful. And now they go after Israel. So now they're getting your ass kicked, which is a terrible thing. I'm not promoting it by any means. I don't want war. War is disgusting. It's evil. But it's a consequence to what happened. And so when what happens and 70% plus of the Palestinians are supportive of Hamas, then why are you sitting there complaining the fact that you're getting your ass kicked now because you got a country that's pissed off in the same way we were pissed off on 9-11, so we went in there and ran roughshod over Afghanistan and Iraq. I don't want this to happen. I can't be any more clear than that. I know my words sound harsh, but it's, it's if you look through history, okay, thousands of years of history, people are completely baffled that this is happening right now. All I'm saying is, I'm not baffled. It's terrible. You don't want to see death of children, any civilian, or anybody. It's obvious. Like, it's, it's already, you guys say, Brad, it's baked in the cake. I like saying built into the cake. I know it's baked in the cake, but built sounds a little bit better. But to keep the peace, <laughs> baked into the cake. It's not, it's, it's a, look, it's a terrible thing no matter which way you look at it. I just want to be clear on my words here because people could take it like, wow, that's not very sympathetic. No, it's terrible. Yes, I don't want people to starve and, and, and die of thirst. Send them water, send all these things. I'm merely pointing out the fact of this is a consequence that happens when you sit there and do something like this to another country and now you piss them off. You've been chanting death to this country, destruction of this country for decades now. They're not going to allow it to happen. They're just as much fearful as you are. You're losing terribly. You're getting your ass kicked. And yes, you should be worried for that. And yes, you should ask for help and aid. My question is that why are we the only ones that are offering the aid, really? I mean, there are other countries. But where is everybody else? And where are the Arab countries? That's all I'm asking. I would love this to stop immediately. Like, I just want peace in the Middle East. I just want everybody to get along. I would love to get along with Democrats, independents, Americans, the Canadians, hell, uh, the Mexicans in Mexico. I don't care who you are. I want peace. I'm a Christian. I don't want this to happen to people. And hopefully you don't feel like I'm teetering. It's a terrible situation. It's, you're seeing, you're, I mean, you are seeing evil in real time. People just getting blown to bits, dying, all because there's a freaking terrorist inside their apartment building and they decide to stay there. Ugh, it's terrible. It's, I hope it ends soon. It is freaking terrible. And it's easy for me to sit behind a camera and a microphone in a nice air-conditioned building going, well, you know, that sucks for you. You're getting your ass kicked. Like, it comes across very cold-hearted, but that's not where my heart is at. And it's probably getting... I'm probably not doing the best job of communicating the heart um, and, and sympathy and, and, and sadness that I have going on uh, for what's taking place there. I'm probably doing a terrible job of communicating that. And uh, hopefully you guys can read between the lines that I don't want to see people die. I want people to be fed. I don't want children to die. I want them to have schooling and an education and a nice place to live. I don't want the entire country to be wiped out. If you want to call Palestine the country, I, I don't want any of that to happen. I don't want any of that to happen. So I just have a feel of necessity to say this because people like to go back with your videos. You know what I mean? They'll clip it. Oh, look what this guy said. You know, look at this freaking bigot, this crazy psycho. No, I, I don't want any of that. I don't want any of that. Well, speaking of crazies and psychos, we got migrants swinging bats at each other in belts, even traffic cones. <laughs> you see it? You see what you see where it's at, right? You see where it's at. Oh, NYC. Oh, okay. So, well, migrants swing bats. Here we go. We got a little bit of footage of this for you, folks. Look at this. Look at it. In a while, just take it over the streets. It's a massive meltdown. 
Oh, I guess hey, better they fight themselves than uh, you know, other Americans. <laughs> Wielding sticks like they're part of a third world country. It's wild. It's wild. There's shocking scene taking place. It's the people Joe wants to allow in. You guys look at that. Just beating up one guy. Yeah. Look at that, huh? Yeah. Oh, now he's fighting cops. Isn't that just great? Oh, yeah. As people are coming here because they want a better life, you guys. Allegedly beating NYPD cops. Isn't that just great? This is who Joe's, Joe wants in. Oh, they're all for a better life, folks. They're all for a better, better life. <laughs> 10 million. 10 million. I have no idea who these people are. Oh, these people won't be deported. No, no, no. They won't be deported. You know, you're probably paying for their food, their shelter, their water, their utilities, possibly their education, their transportation, their lawyer fees. Oh, yeah, you're paying for all this. <laughs> it's astonishing that it's like you could have a guy that totally beats the shit out of you. Like, say you're a police officer, just beats the crap, the living hell out of you. You get thrown in the hospital, right? Days to confuse. You're bleeding all over. You're just glad to be alive. And uh, your tax money is going towards supporting that dude that just got done beating your ass that shouldn't be here in the first place. We talked about scenarios of you. You went to you went to war in Afghanistan or Iraq, one or the other. You come back. You're homeless, right? You got a lot of things going on. The VA ain't great because the Democrats sat there and tore it apart. The government sucks at everything. I've always said, start sending millions of dollars to the VA. Take care of our vets. Take care of them. Democrats don't want to do it. And by the way, neither really does Republicans. So they don't want to take care of our vets. So our vets are now homeless. They're up in hotel rooms. Thank God they at least got a hotel room and they're not sleeping on the streets. And uh, so they're in the hotel rooms and, and, and the Democrats kick them out. And, and who do they put in there? Who do they put in there? You guys remember? You guys know. Who did they put in those hotel rooms? People from Afghanistan and Iraq. You can have a scenario that you fought one of those guys in war. Maybe killed one of your buddies. We don't know who they are. We have no idea who they are. And they got your spot in the hotel room. That's Joe Biden's thinking for you. But four more years. You're right, guys. No, four more years. Yeah, four more years of Joe Biden. Four more years of this. Four more years of... Uh, the homeless crisis, four more years of massive illegal immigration, four more years of having terrorists sitting there, sleeper cells, possibly having a dirty bomb in your country, killing you and your family members. No, you're right. Four more years. Great idea. Great idea to vote for a president that doesn't have his head on straight. A president that can't even sit there and read from a teleprompter. You're right. Let's vote that guy back in the office. The same dude that was sitting there drooling, dripping from a drip tray, drooling into a drip tray, rather, with a bicycle helmet on. You're telling me that guy should be president of the United States? Somehow makes sense to Democrats. It will never make sense to me. It will never make sense to me. The fact that some people think Joe Biden's better than Donald Trump. I'm not saying Donald Trump is perfect. He's not perfect. But damn, he's way better than Joey. He's way better than Joey. Well, let's get to some good news. We have had a lot of bad news. I did a terrible job explaining the Hamas and Gaza and all that other stuff. So let's get to some good news here. Where Governor Hochul uh, speaks on new anti-squatter law. They do not have the rights of tenants. So I'm not going to watch the video. I kind of want to just explain what actually took place here. So this picture of a video where this person on the left is the homeowner, the person on the right seemed to be somebody that was doing work on her home. He said he wasn't paid. So he decided to become a squatter and lie saying that he had a lease or some sort of property uh, tenant rights to him living there. And so rather than the police arresting him and kicking him out of the homeowner's house, which is basically, uh, I don't know what you'd call that. What is that? Robbery, theft. I mean, I don't know if he was stealing stuff or whatever. It's a, it's a break in. Um, they arrest her. They arrested the homeowner. So we were all going, well, this is happening everywhere. You had illegal immigrants chanting to go out and take over American homes, which we covered here on the show. And so what they finally did, it's astonishing. A lot of Republicans were involved in this, by the way. This is probably why it really got passed. A lot of Republicans were pushing for this. They sat there and they changed the law just slightly. So basically now it's clear as day that squatters do not have the rights of tenants. So that's that's actually... that. That phraseology is in the legal paperwork. And so they try to make it crystal clear where now squatters do not have the rights of tenants and they will be prosecuted and there will be consequences and they have to show proof that they have the right to be in there. In other words, the right as a tenant to be on that property. And if they don't, then now you can actually be arrested and removed from that property per the homeowner's permission rather than having to go the legal route of going to court. So basically now somebody gets to stay in your home all they want. You got to take them to court. You got to wait for your court date. You got to shell out all this money all because that person never should have been there in the first place. You know what? As I mentioned, we got to give pats in the back 
when some people do things that are right. The Democrats did do something right here. New York City uh, is predominantly a Democrat-ran area. Governor Hochul is no fan of me, and I am no fan of her, but good on her for passing a new anti-squatter law. I will always tell you the truth. I am never going to bullshit you. What you see is what you get. We got to give them a pat on the back here, folks, that they actually did something right. They did something that's common sense, which is astonishing because rarely do they actually have any common sense. But right here specifically, we put them into state law because it makes sense. So I don't know what it is. Somehow the wires did connect on this one, you guys. The wires are usually crossed and oh, you're all messed up for Democrats, but this one actually worked out. So good on them. I'm actually happy that this took place. Can we make more laws that get rid of the insanity that's taking place in Democrat-ran areas? Maybe we're changing, folks. Maybe we're having a big change. Well, this one kind of says the contrary here. What we're seeing in this country with the most recent generation, what is it, Generation Z, Generation X, I don't know what it is, I think it's Generation Z. Uh, they're not having kids. Like people in my generation, we're not having kids. We're not birthing. At some point, we're going to have a cross here where there's going to be more people dying than actual birth in the United States, which is scary when it comes to tax revenue. It's scary when it comes to um, hell, uh, social security for retirement there in the future. There's a massive problem here. But what you're going to see here through this video that's on MSNBC Morning Joe, which again, we're no, we're no fans of Joe Scarborough. Um, this guy's partially right here. The only thing I don't like what he's about to mention is there's no personal responsibility. He kind of blames anybody and everybody out there. He blames Joe Biden for the COVID stimulus checks. He doesn't name Joe by name. Uh, he, and he, but he doesn't blame like the people that are paying $100,000 for these college universities. He just goes, well, they're taking out debt. So, uh, well, you know, now they're coming out of college with all this debt. Well, why don't you not go to college in the first place then? Like, why are you blaming everybody else for your own actions? So here we go. For the first time in our nation's history, a 30-year-old man or woman isn't doing as well as his or her parents were at 30. That is the social compact breaking down. People aged 30 to 34, 60% of them in 1990 had one child. Now it's 27%. People are opting out of America. They're not optimistic about it. They're not having kids. Young people aren't having sex. They're not meeting. They're not mating. The pool of emotionally and economically viable men shrinks every day, which lessens household formation. So we have a real issue. Young people are enraged. So it turns every cut every movement into an opportunistic infection because quite frankly, they are just pissed off. Mm -hmm. They look up, they see wealth, exceptional wealth across my generation and people in certain industries, and they are really struggling. Their purchasing power is going down and the incumbents create artificial scarcity on campus. We take pride in rejecting 90% of our applicants. So the incumbents who already have a degree see so their degree go up in value. We get very concerned with housing and traffic once we own a housing, housing permits. Are, are sequestered from young people. Housing prices have gone from 290 to 420 in the last four years. So a young person, a house, stocks that I don't own skyrocket in value. Let's have COVID relief and flush the markets and take assets way up because if a million people dying would be bad, would be tragic if I got less wealthy. And I, we're doing it on their credit card. Young people have every reason to be enraged and every issue they see, they look up, they get angry and they see someone doing better than them. And then every day it is speedballed in their face that they are failing, that they are not doing as well as everyone around them. We have well, you should stop looking at other people and see how other people live. There was a saying back in the day, right? Was it keeping up with the Joneses? Now it's keeping up with the Kardashians. Stop looking at what other people have and kind of look at what you have. And also as a basic, basic kind of core foundational belief of Christianity, just be grateful for what you have. But what I kind of want to point out here is a lot of people make a sequence of bad decisions that create a hole for themselves. And it's really tough for the individual to look and reflect on oneself at the hole that they dug themselves and go, man, I did that. I dug that hole, but it's a lot easier to blame a nameless, faceless, shadowy figure for one's actions. For the prime example, he goes, well, they're, they're paid all this money for college and universities. They're coming out with a bunch of debt. Well, okay, well, don't go to university. Go to a trade. If you don't have the money for it, don't put it on credit. I, I follow Dave Ramsey. I've been following Dave Ramsey since I was a teenager. I follow him to a T. I don't, I have a credit card, but I don't use it. Granted, I'm very frugal. You guys see me wear the same stuff all the time. I am very, very frugal. I eat turkey. I eat beans. I eat rice. Granted, things are really expensive, but I'm a minimalist. I don't, guys, I drink out of the same, you guys see me same, same mug all the time, right? I have one bald Bradshaw mug. I have one bald Bradshaw shirt. I got to support my own brand. But other than that, you know, I'm not out there buying clothes all the time. You know, it's, it's insane that 
people look at other ones and well look how they're living well if you want that standard then you have to make certain decisions in your life to get to the standard of living that they are at not everybody's going to be equal you know you can have that standard of living don't go pay a hundred thousand dollars at say usc when you can go to a state school or two years of community college and then go to a state school and pay a fraction of the cost well i want the college experience okay well there you go you got the college experience now you're in debt and now you're going to shit on everybody else because they didn't make that decision and now they're living a much more prosperous life than you because they don't have debt because they didn't go to college or they went to college and did it the right way and you wanted a college experience because you wanted a party and all these other things I'm really making one point here folks it's just astonishing to me i'm if you haven't realized already it's a big pet peeve of mine of people always blaming everybody else for their shit do you know what i mean like you no, you went and got the credit card. You swiped the credit card. Like if you can't afford to live in a certain area, you have to move or make more money. It's it's an income problem. You just can't afford to live in that area. I know you want to. I, I understand this comes across as really cold hearted, but there's a reality to this. You have to separate emotions from rationality, logic. You know, Ben Shapiro has that saying, facts don't care about your feelings. Reality doesn't care about your feelings either. It's going to happen. And sometimes you just got to get up and move somewhere. Like I have a five-year plan. If I can't afford a property here in California, do you think I'm going to stay here? No, I can't afford it. Why would I stay here then? And it's turning into dumpster fire, but that's beside the point. So it's people's actions that have usually put them in a certain position financially. You know, buying the most expensive product, or buying the name brand rather than the store brand. Like you could save a lot of money. Mind you, somebody teaches personal finance. You, you could save a lot of money that route, but it's people's decision-making. I'm not saying what he said was wholeheartedly wrong. I'm not. I'm merely picking and choosing certain aspects that I go, this is what I tend to see. People complain a lot, but yet they don't want to change their behavior. Everybody knows personal finance is 80 to 90% behavior, 20 to 10% head knowledge. I would go as far as to say maybe 5 to 10%. You really don't have to do anything. There's a whole industry called behavioral economics that you can look into, which is the psychology of people spending. It's we refer it to, it used to be called this, but it's not politically correct anymore. It's called the stupid things people do with money. People are very stupid with money. I know people don't want to hear that, but we might be looking at ourselves right now. Yeah, I did a really stupid purchase. That was really dumb of me, man. I bought a $5 Diet Coke at McDonald's. Probably not a good purchase, right? Man, I bought a, a bag of chips from, I don't know where you guys shop, but I bought a $5 bag of chips. Probably not a good purchase. $5 for a bag of chips this big is insane but people do it people do it you got to be frugal budget folks you got to be frugal and budget well as i mentioned earlier in the show we are more we are more screwed than ever before fbi director ray raises alarm about th uh, terror threats warns about tiktok raises eyebrows on protest remarks this is you guys this is insane and it's democrats doing joe biden's in office this is all democrats it's not a republican thing it's not a conservative thing fbi director christopher ray warmed in an interview this week not like a month ago not like 10 years ago this week that the U.S. is facing an unprecedented threat environment across the board. I'm trying, I was meditating on this the other day. I was like, how do I, how do I paint a picture here? Like, how do, how do I create words or find words that can create like an impact and like an oh shit moment for my viewers and listeners going, wow, oh, we're effed. Oh, no, no, this is like really, really, really bad. And I'm sure some of you got that. I'm not playing like you're dumb. But I'm trying to find and reach everybody. Maybe maybe like 100 people get it. Maybe 150. Like, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't really see the threat, really. Democrats don't see it for that. That's damn sure. No, no. We are. We are. It's bad. So Ray made the remarks during a wide-reaching interview with NBC News on Tuesday in which he urged Americans who use TikTok to quit using the app and made remarks about the anti-Semitic protest across college campuses. Uh, I said this when the vote came in. That is about half Republicans and all Democrats. When I tend to see that overlap there, there's clearly something the government knows about TikTok that they're not willing to tell us. And if they're willing to go as far as to ban the thing or at least have it sold, uh, <laughs> something's going on. So you have Lester Holt saying, as I look back over my career in law enforcement, uh, this is Ray speaking, I am hard pressed on, uh, I'm hard pressed to come up with a time where I've seen so many different threats all elevate at the same time whether it's the threats from China, Russia, Iran, the terrorism threats, foreign terrorist threats, and domestic terrorist threats. The guy's like, I've been in law enforcement my entire life. I've never seen anything like this. <laughs> so we thought that even before October 7th, if you and I were having this conversation then, 
we would have said that terrorism threat was already elevated. But post October 7th, it's gone to a whole other level. Well, yeah, I would like to think so. The fact that you have massive uh, terrorists, terrorists in this massive terrorists, uh, a massive amount of terrorism uh, taking across, uh, happening across the globe, but also a massive amount of terrorists pouring across our border. The fact that you have people chanting death to America and death to Israel on college campuses. And you have an entire government in Iran chanting the same thing. And these people want to see the destruction of Israel. They're chanting it on college campuses, not like something we're making up here. I would like to think, yeah, some of these people are a little not there. They're not with us. They're not on the head. And it's astonishing because you're a threat to democracy. It, it really is wild. Joe Biden sat there many times. He goes, MAGA supporters are a threat to democracy. You're a threat to the republic. You're a threat to democracy because you want to vote in Trump, a guy that cares about this country versus a guy, Joe Biden, that's give two bleeps about this country, cares more about everybody else around the globe than you. It, it really, it, it's, there is no sound logic behind that. So Ray is saying there's a significant increase, especially in anti-Semitic threats and anti-Semitic violence. Oh yeah, I would say so. So we don't monitor protests, he said, but we do share intelligence about specific threats of violence. I don't know their FBI director for Christopher Ray because you had a few hundred uh, FBI agents on the ground for January 6th. What do you mean you don't monitor protests? Interesting. I don't know if I believe that. I don't believe a lot that comes out of the FBI's mouth, to be honest. Congress is on the verge of passing legislation, which they did, that would essentially ban TikTok if it's not sold. You've talked about this. Many in the government have talked about this and the threat of TikTok. Can you be specific on what the fear is? TikTok for us represents a national security concern. And the reason I say that is that TikTok's parent company is beholden to the Chinese government so that for us, it manifests itself in three specific ways. If you, what, what you do with the data, uh, it has to do with the recommendation algorithm and it has to deal with the software. I mean, this algorithm is telling people to kill themselves. This algorithm is pushing anti-Semitic content. This algorithm is specifically targeting Americans to push a certain narrative. You are being completely manipulated on TikTok. I mean, you are on YouTube as well, but you are completely being manipulated on all levels. Truly wild stuff taking place. I will continue to use that phraseology because I don't have anything better to express how insane this country has gotten, this globe has gotten. I feel like we're on the brink of something terribly ha terrible happening. I don't know what will happen, but it's all thanks to Democrats. I'm not saying Republicans are out of the weeds on any of this stuff either, but predominantly Democrats for what we're seeing right now. That's pretty damn sure. Well, we're going to end it off here with a little attack on DEI because Stacey Abrams our attacks on democracy, education, and our economy. Here we go. It, look, at, because you oppose DEI, you guys, you're a threat to democracy. You're a threat to our education and our economy. It's not the fact that you think, well, race doesn't have anything to do with anything, so why even push it in the first place? Democrats don't think like that. These libs, these progressive lefties, they don't think about that. Race is every being of who they are and what their ideology is about. It's always been that way. It's never changed. That's why I don't sugarcoat it. This whole idea of, well, the North and the South fought in the Civil War. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Nope, nope, nope. It was the Republican North, the Democrat North, and the Democrat South that fought in it. So it was the Republicans versus the Democrats. That's what it was. So let's not sugarcoat this. Let's not, let's not pretend like the North and South were just the good guys and bad guys. No, it was the Republicans, the good guys, versus the Democrats, the bad guys. It wasn't the Republicans that had the Ku Klux Klan. No, 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 no. There wasn't a single, there wasn't a single slaveholder in the Republican Party at a certain point in American's history. Specifically, Democrats were slaveholders. At a certain part, they were all the slaveholders in this country. Interesting. They're also the creator of the Ku Klux Klan. So, you know, it's really weird how she's going to sit there and say, we're a threat to democracy when uh, we've never been a threat to democracy. It's always been the Democrats. I mean, hell, it's Joe Biden allowing 10.2 million people to be in this country illegally that we know nothing about. It's Joe Biden that's allowing Hamas to keep hostages of Americans. It's Joe Biden that is weak on his foreign policy, which is why Russia invaded Ukraine, Taiwan, might be invaded by China any day now. And uh, that's a real threat to democracy. I like to think it's the Democrat Party that doesn't want to look into election integrity. It's a Democrat Party that won't clean up their voter registration rolls. That seems like a pretty big threat to democracy as well, especially to the Republic. Hmm, interesting. But don't worry, guys. You guys are the threat. Not all these, these anti-Semitic protesters that are pro-Palestine asking for the destruction of Israel on these college campuses. They're not a threat at all. They're not extreme whatsoever, according to Joe Biden, the Democrat Party, or Stacey Abrams here. You are. So the twice failed, wonder why, Georgia Democratic gubernatorial nominee Stacey Abrams claimed during a recent interview that discriminatory diversity, equity, and inclusion policies were a crucial part of democracy, education, and the economy. Did I not just say it's every, every part of their being? It is like a pillar in the Democrat Party 
and it's it's like maybe the entirety, the whole foundation of the progressive left here, that diversity, equity, inclusion, basically race, has everything to do with everything. Abrams, who denied the results of her first gubernatorial race, made the remarks last week during an MSNBC interview with Al Sharpton, who is a race baiter. The guy's a loser. He sits there and, and takes people's emotions and heightens them and manipulates them into giving them money. The guy's, a, the guy's disgusting. He's a thief. He's a thief. We should be terrified of the person who wants to come back into the White House. Strip us of our rights. Isn't that an insane statement? Strip us of our rights. Democrat Party sat there and censored conservatives for years. It came out called the Twitter files. Joe Biden sat there and worked with the government. The Democrat Party worked with the government to censor conservatives and Republicans. God, what, is, what right is that stripping you from? The First Amendment. God, what, what party wanted to sit there and create a ministry of truth to go after your First Amendment rights. What party was? Oh, it's the Democrat Party. You're right. Oh, <laughs> what party right now wants to wants to ban assault weapons? Whatever the hell that means. I mean, Joe Biden said it was single. Uh, it was it was you know uh, semi-automatic rifles is what he said. Uh, so it's basically virtually every gun and every handgun out there, every rifle. Uh, what party is doing that? Uh, what what party? Joe Biden and the Democrat Party. That's also oh, Second Amendment rights. There that go. But they're going to sit there and pull this bullshit. The gaslighting's unreal. The gaslighting's unreal. So rescind the economic progress we have made and undermine the democracy that we hold to be so dear. Really, because you're trying to destroy our democracy, our republic. We have to remember that built into every victory are the seeds of defeat. And built into every defeat are the seeds of victory. Wow, I wonder how she wrote that one. We have seen victory, but we cannot rest on that victory. Is, are we listening to Kamala Harris here? Are we, doesn't it sound like we're listening to Kamala Harris? Don't make me do the Kamala Harris cackle. <laughs> like a freaking hyena. Think that it is, it was a, I can't even see that, impervious to harm. Uh, what we know is that the attack on diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI, is an attack on democracy. It's an attack on education. It's an attack on how the economy works because of what Senator Ossoff and Senator Warnock represent. Our pathways to the American dream, they're proof points, and those proof points scare those who want this world to be more narrow and restrictive. <laughs> I'm going to get through this. It's it more insane as we go forward. And so we have to recognize that our opportunity to hold to those successes require a constant attention and constant attending. You know, voting is not magic. Voting is medicine. But it also means that it's a constant engagement. And we cannot have a moment of success. We have to keep working constantly to move ourselves forward. By moving forward, they're talking about the destruction of this nation, folks. They're talking about the destruction of this nation, but they're going to sit there and say, you're the threat. You're the destructive person. Not these anti-Semitic protesters. Not these people that are violently attacking Americans. They're holding up American flags. These people want the destruction of this country, folks. They think this country is bigoted. They think this country is racist. They think this country was founded on white supremacy. These people are hurting our education system. They're the ones that are sitting there pumping out these freaking insane. Do I need to show it? These insane people. All these people went through the progressive lefty education system, and now they're going to Columbia University, Yale, Harvard, USC, coming out indoctrinated, brainwashed, and now they're so brainwashed, they're sitting there as lesbians and gays in support of Hamas, a terrorist organization that is not for gays or lesbians. I don't care if somebody's gay or lesbian. It's not my life. I think it's a sin, but we all struggle with different types of sin. I'm not saying I'm holier than thou either. I have my own sins. I got my own struggles. I am not a perfect person. I make a lot of mistakes. I've said a lot of mistakes, probably even during this episode. I didn't explain things right. You know, my my heart doesn't actually come across in a certain way, but I am not perfect and neither are these people, but we're not doing a great job here of a nation of actually inculcating certain values that are, I don't know, maybe propaganda for this country, but it's better than creating what you're seeing here on college campuses. This is insane. Holy lordy, folks. Damn good episode today. <laughs> I love hanging out with you guys. If it were up to me, if it were up to me, I would probably do a two or three hour podcast. You know, spend a little bit more time talking about things. But, uh, you know, it's morning. We all got work. We got things to do. But uh, I just love hanging out with you guys. You're awesome people. I, I really, I'm not just, I'm not building it up. I'm not, uh, what's the word? I'm not, um. There's a word, you know, when you kind of build somebody up. Is it not brown nosing, is it? 
I forgot the what, what the term is. You guys will let me know. You're probably screaming at me in the live chat, yelling at your TV, your cell phone. Um, I just, I really do. Uh, this is this is a great community that we've built. I haven't done anything. I sit here and rant. Probably say some stupid things. Probably say accurate things. I don't know. Uh, but uh, you guys hang out with me every day, and I get to, I get the pleasure of hanging out with all of you every single day. So it's the community here that I absolutely love and adore. You're true patriots. You love this country. I'm not blowing smoke up your you know what. I really do firmly believe that. And you know we deal with a lot of crap here from YouTube. We deal with a lot of crap from these lefties, and it's it's you guys that truthfully actually keep this going. Um, knowing that you guys are watching, that uh, you're listening, you're hanging out. Uh, it, it does get, um, it does get discouraging, like really at times it's not, it's not easy doing this. You know, again, I, I work multiple jobs and I'm not complaining. Please don't feel like I'm complaining. I am not. I'm just expressing to you that I'm grateful for all of you. It's just not easy dealing with YouTube. It's uphill climb. You know, um, we're still growing. Thank God. But that's because of all the effort that you guys are doing uh, that we're doing here behind the scenes on the show. I'm a one man person, the emails, the writing of the book, like, packaging the books, um, selling of the shirts. Like there's nobody else. I, I really can't be more clear than that. I don't have an assistant. I don't have anybody helping me. It is literally just me here. The guy that you see, the bald guy, it's all me. And uh, I, I wish I could create a better product um, in terms of uh, uh, the show and everything, but we'll get there one day. Oh boy, we'll get, we're grassroots, baby. I'm not complaining. You're getting a damn good show here. But um, uh, we have a vision and, and the vision is to grow and, and hopefully, um, you know, be maybe just teensy wincy as good as maybe, you know, a lot of the other people out there. But anyways, I'm, I'm done rambling. I don't know where we're going with that. But uh, uh, hit that like and subscribe button. Leave us a comment down below if the comments are actually working. And uh, if they're not, let me know in the live chat as always, folks. You're, you're freaking patriots. I love you to death. I hope you have a blessed day, a blessed weekend coming up here. And I'll see you next time here on The Whole Rat Show.